five, four, three, two, one. Many of us have been raised with a belief in a higher power, God or gods who created and control the universe. But as we grow older, we may begin to question this belief and search for evidence to support it. I'm going to take you on a journey through the evidence and reasoning that has led me to my personal conclusion that a God does not exist. But before we begin, let's lighten the mood with a couple of jokes. Why was the philosopher always so skeptical? Because he was always questioning everything, of course. <laughs> How many philosophers does it take to change a light bulb? It's a trick question. They'll just argue about whether the light bulb needs changing in the first place. First, let's examine the available evidence used to support the view that God exists. Is it adequate? Many religious texts such as the Bible or the Quran are often cited as evidence for God's existence. But as we look closer, we see that these texts were written by humans and are subject to interpretation. They may provide comfort or guidance, but they do not provide concrete evidence for the existence of God. One might argue that the beauty and complexity of the universe is evidence for God's existence. But scientists have been able to provide natural explanations for the origins and workings of the universe through theories such as the Big Bang and evolution. There is no scientific evidence that points to the existence of a higher power. Many have turned to personal experiences, such as religious experiences or miracles, as evidence for God's existence. But these experiences are subjective and can be explained through psychological and neurological processes. They do not provide objective evidence for the existence of God. And even when I turn to the arguments put forward by philosophers and theologians, I find them to be wanting. The concept of a God is often based on assumptions and unprovable premises, rather than solid reasoning. And finally, when I weigh the benefits of believing in a God against the lack of evidence and the flawed arguments, I find that there are no compelling reasons to believe in one. There's no benefit for me to believe in it. It actually may be a detriment to me to believe in their God and follow all the prescriptions of that religion. Given that all the available evidence used to support the view that God exists is shown to be inadequate, we must consider whether God is a sort of entity that, if God exists, there would be presumption that would be evidence adequate to support the view that God exists. And as we've seen, there is not. Furthermore, this presumption has not been defeated despite serious efforts to do so in the area where evidence would appear, if there were any, has been comprehensively examined. Finally, there are no acceptable beneficial reasons to believe that God exists. So based on the Santa Claus argument by Martin in 1990, we are justified in believing that God does not exist. This is not to say that belief in God is inherently bad but rather that it should be based on evidence and reason, and not simply on tradition or personal experiences. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, please leave the, your comments below. Let me know what you think. Please give it a like. Please share this video. Let other people know about my content. I put a lot of work into these videos and these scripts that I create. So thank you so much. And until next time, this is Ozian Talks. Bye-bye.